action. Hey, Stevie Nunn here doing the model car crawl. It's January, it's snowy, we can't go outside. The junkyards are all covered with snow. We can't see the cars anyway, so we're indoors. I'm wearing a t-shirt today. It's kind of fun. It says, uh, AMT, Mom loves me. Pyro, Mom likes me. Uh, what that refers to is the idea that back in the 60s, you know, a lot of kids, their moms would buy them a toy car, and if she spent a buck forty-nine on an AMT model, yeah, she really thought about you. If she just wanted to quiet you down, she'd get you a forty-nine cents uh, crappy model from Pyro. Now, when we say crappy models, well, what do we mean by that? Well, this is a Pyro 1948 Lincoln Continental model. Uh, the box is attractive, you know, as an illustration. This is a re-release uh, from, oh, probably 1970 or something like that. But the original kit uh, was, um, you know, an interesting little thing. Uh, this one has been built, and the thing with these is here's the instructions. And these are small, small boxes. The instructions show, you know, pretty basic stuff, not, not much to fall in love with. Anyway, there you go, like that. So there's that stuff. The kit itself, voila! Um, it's nice enough. The way they got this model to fit into this little box is by rendering the body in slabs. It's not molded like in 3D, like a shell. Instead, it was up to the, the child, the builder, to glue together the various slabs. Even the front fenders are two pieces, the top and the bottom, which allowed this many-piece kit to fit into that small box. And again, on the retail marketplace, it was about shelf space and getting as much as possible. So a single big box that maybe generated 40 cents in profit was not the way to go versus five smaller boxes that generated 40 cents in profit. Get it? So that was what that was about. Now the downside to these Palmer model kits uh, was the pyro was the fact that they had molded plastic wheels. I mean the detail was kind of there but no chrome, no black rubber tires and these would have sold for probably oh, 49 or 69 cents back in the day. But wait, it gets worse. Uh, Premier is another model kit manufacturer. Here is their 1960 American Compact series. This is a Plymouth Valiant. The box, you know, it's kind of appealing. It doesn't look so bad. You know, a nice little illustration, watercolors, um, rear three-quarter view. Uh, you know, not a bad thing. And again, Premier, largely known for watercolor kits and just weird, weird sort of like painting stuff. Uh, they got into model cars for a brief period, but this Valiant model, well, it couldn't be that bad, right? Uh, not so fast. Look at that. This is a bunch of flat plastic bits and pieces that kind of go together to make, here's the interior, and the body is all these little pieces, because again, to have an injection mold that creates a shell is very expensive, versus making little slabs like these that you glue together. Two things I'll say about this, when you finally glue this together, there's lots of gaps and seams throughout the body that really ruin the look of the thing unless you putty them closed, and not a lot of eight-year-old kids know how to work with putty. Uh, you know, and beyond that, if you look at this plastic, it's kind of pinkish. It's almost like Chrysler's Coral, but it's actually marbled. If you look at it, there's a lot of white swirled in there, and that's a sign of cheap plastic. And that's also, you know, it's a sign of getting what you pay for. Uh, when it comes down to uh, injection molding, uh, the plastic has to be stirred properly if it's got any kind of metallic effect. This is not on purpose. This is just cheap. In the world of metal, this would be called sweep alloy. You sweep up the junk off the floor, melt it, and that's your sweep alloy. So this is a Premier 1960 Valiant model kit. Again, this is, uh, it says here, 41 cents right there. It was on discount at some store somewhere. It says, yeah, 41 cents, uh, Miracle Mart. So again, these were sort of discount toys. Another goodie, sort of, is this puppy right here. This is, uh, I think this is a, uh, a pyro kit as well. The box is nice, 1965 Pontiac. Looks good, right? Well, let's see what's going on inside. It's a Bonneville, has custom parts. And inside, <laughs> well, this one's been started, but again, we have that uh, multi-piece slab-type body where all the parts and pieces are, you know, what a, what a crappy, I mean, frankly, I mean, look at the bottom of that thing. Now, here's the thing. With this one, these were also offered as electric-powered, battery-motivated toys. So it's half model, half toy, you know? So again, with that slab stuff going on with the body. Again, a child who had this kit would have a, a finished result that wouldn't be that exciting. 
um, you know, you might get turned off to model building forever. But again, for 98 cents, you know, mom saved a half a buck versus buying a little better kit. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, another example here, this is a 62 Plymouth Valiant. This one also a 98 cent model. And again, this is uh, similar to the Premier model, but it's not. A whole different company. And more often than not, most kit manufacturers will stay away from duplication. They don't want to fight it out on the shelf. Well, in this case, they did because the early Valiant was a pretty popular car, as was the Mustang when it first came out. So any piece of that market was a good thing to go after. So here we have on this one, again, the same you know kind of blah presentation inside. And again, with the uh, multi-piece slab body, this one here has been glued together. But again, it's um, you know not a great example of, of, of tooling uh, effort. And, and a kid who built this probably might get turned off to model building. By contrast, this is AMT. Now, AMT was uh, one of the leaders in polystyrene and before that uh, um, acetone type uh, model kits. And this here, these were $1.49. In fact, if you look on the end of the box, the code 149, that's the price. Although this one here sold for $1.04 in the toy department right there at some long ago closed a uh, hobby shop or something. But the beauty of the AMT model was the three-in-one configuration right there. That meant you could build it three ways. It's not three cars in one box, but you could build it a stock, race car, or a custom. And let's take a peek inside. The big thing about AMT was the one-piece body right there. You don't glue this together out of five different panels. Way more um, detailed. The grill was much nicer. Very well done with chrome plating. Uh, the chassis was pretty decent right here. Now, it does have solid axles and stuff, but, you know, it has a frame and, and reasonable detail, but most importantly, it has an engine. There it is right there. That's the 352 uh, in its first year for 1961, the big Thunderbird 352. Also, a 390 was possible, I believe, in uh, 61. But again, nice interior on this kit. Somebody started this one, but the interior tub actually has a separate steering wheel and seats. And uh, you build this out, it's a pretty nice model. And again, AMT really kind of uh, sl slammed the door shut on the crappy models. Now keep in mind, if your mom loved you, she'd get you the AMT hit for buck forty nine. If she liked you, she'd get you the sixty nine cent uh, American Compact from Premier. Now the thing with these is, in most of these cases, all of them in fact, the box art on the outside of the package is all you had to go by in terms of uh, predicting what the kit was. Well, in the late 70s, the Jimmy Carter presidential administration, uh, there were some complaints by consumer groups, and so there was renewed legislation when it came to truth in advertising, in particular stuff marketed toward kids, because you know, they're easily duped, you'd think, right? So they mandated a picture, a photo of the actual model had to be portrayed on the box, and that, I won't say kills the model industry, but it didn't help. This is the Chevy Beretta GTU, and if you ask me, this is how not to sell a model car kit. Uh, it's kind of boring, kind of bland, and on the side of the box, yes, there are, you know, the building options right there, but if we look on this, it says here, a retouched photo of actual kit, but with that said, they probably took care or got rid of any shine or sheen, uh, but largely, what you see is what you get. Now, it's a good little model kit, but again, a model kit box has to fire the imagination. And after the Carter administration's mandate where pictures took over for art and illustrations and fanciful stuff on the outside, well, that and uh, video games really killed the model car business, at least for a good few years. So that's the story of uh, you know whether your mom likes you or loves you. It kind of comes down to what model kit she might have bought you as a kid. I'm kidding with that stuff. But with that said, a uh, big world of model cars collecting. And we will be going back to the junkyard, more junkyard crawl, and of course muscle car crawl with our friends at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. But for now, it's snowy and cold, so we're indoors doing model car crawl. But if you like this and want to see more videos, by all means, uh, subscribe to the Steve Max YouTube channel.